Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Channel's television celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the News at 10. Remind of our top stories. President Mohammed Buhari holds bilateral talks with Chancellor Angela Merkel in Germany, pledges to ensure release of the rests of the abducted Chibok girls. The president and his wife differ over issues of governance in separate international media interviews. President Buhari insists she is less versed in political matters. Federal government seeks to address challenges of food security caused by climate change as Nigeria marks World Food Day. And Syrian President Bashar al-Assad banks on a victory in Aleppo as a catalyst to retaking the rest of the country from rebels. Do remember that all our top stories can be found on our website as channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Do log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from your respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channel TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share. Those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you, all you need to do is just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Airtel, the smartphone network. Well, here are some photos you sent to our eyewitness portal. We begin with this photo, which was uh, sent in, showing a truck moving through floodwaters along Oshinfolari Street in Bariga area here in Lagos. Our eyewitness reporter calls on the government to clear the blocked drains. Our next photo was sent in from the Ekbe Jabu Ode Highway. We can see the two men sitting dangerously in the booth of this moving vehicle. Our eyewitness reporter calls on traffic regulators to arrest and prosecute those involved in such acts. In this picture, we see a fallen fuel tanker in Agwede area in Ikorodu. Our eyewitness reporter advises tanker drivers to adhere to traffic regulations. Moving on, our eyewitness reporter commends the Edo State Government for the ongoing construction of Ibuwe Street in Benin City, the state capital. And finally is this photo which shows a man who appears to be a commercial motorcycle rider and three children sitting on this moving motorcycle along the Yakubogawan Crescent in Abuja, the federal capital territory. Our eyewitness reporter wants traffic regulators to end cases of overloading. We do sincerely thank you for sending in those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. Airtel, the smartphone network. The University of Ibadan may soon get off the national power grid and move on to solar energy. This follows the launch of a 10 megawatt solar power plant at the institution in Oyo State, southwest of Nigeria. The initiative, which is a Nigerian-German energy partnership project, is expected to supply power to the university and its environs. All part of what is happening here. After two long years of deliberations between the University of Ibadan and the Republic of Germany, the mutual dream of creating clean energy sources across Nigeria becomes a reality with the launch of this 10 megawatt solar power plant at UI. I commission this on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Nigeria in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Speaking on behalf of President Muhammadu Buhari at the historic launch, the Minister of State for Education, Professor Tony Awuka, insists the government is resolute in its commitment to renewable energy. As you are aware, the federal government, under the able leadership of President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, recently launched the Energizing Education Program Initiative, EEPI. It is envisaged that this should be achieved through the utilization of off-grid independent power plants, RPPS. 
which falls under the Public-Private Partnership PPP initiative. The German ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Bernard Schlagheck, gives an insight into what to expect from the project. This is going to be the first one in the country. And the next one in the country, I'm very honored to say, will be at the Amadou Bello University in Zaria. All of the paperwork was completed last week, and we will be replicating it there. This self-sustaining prototype, according to experts, will last at least 25 years and serve as a research hub for engineers in solar power development. And gives a unique opportunity to develop a solar curriculum and that will include a solar lab specially designed for university use that will help to train a new generation of uh, Nigerian experts in solar energy field. The Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewoli, who initiated the program when he was a Vice Chancellor of UI, urges the Nigerian and German governments to ensure the project lasts. Part of our desire is to upgrade 17 hospitals next year. It's already inserted into our 2017 budget. I want to see these seven facilities energy sufficient. I want to congratulate the leadership of Investor Urban for keeping the flag flying. The solar power plant is expected to be 1,000 times the size of these panels and would be completely assembled in six months. It would power up UI and its environs, provide irrigation and veritable shade for vegetable, even as it is also being replicated in at least six universities nationwide. <laughs> You're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. Let's quickly shift gears now, shall we, as we take you to our Buja studios where Gloria Mizweke is standing by to take us through. Gloria? Judge Justice Samson Waifo is recommending prosecution and imprisonment for judges found to be corrupt if the National Judicial Council wants the judiciary to be free of corruption. According to the 82-year-old retired justice, priority should be placed on reading the judiciary of corruption and not the process, as the law has the mechanism to punish security agencies if they flout its provisions. Justice Waifu made his view known in an exclusive interview with Channel Television in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. I would not say that the Nigerian judiciary is corrupt, but... It cannot be denied that there are some corrupt judges. A corrupt judge is more harmful to the society than a man who runs amok with a dagger in a crowded street. If a judge is corrupt, he's no longer a judge, he's a thief. And therefore, he should be treated as such, according to law, and sent to jail. That's the way I look at it. The substantive issue is corruption. Is it true that these people were actually corrupt and that something was, you know, huge sums of money were found in their place? If that is so, the, que the question of the procedure that was taken will be a secondary thing. Well, the DSS or so, they can be punished for what they did. But the result, if the money was actually found, but particularly when I consider that court of happy justice who took who demanded for two hundred million naira. It was found to be true. Now they, they retired him. That, that one is completely unacceptable. They shouldn't have retired. They should have dismissed him and then sent him to jail. If you do that, send this one to jail. Send the other one to jail. Those who are really corrupt when you find them. The corruption will stop. Straight. Because they'll be afraid. The judges now will be afraid. Because it can happen. But if you just retire, you just mind them. A Fajr High Court sitting in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, has dismissed prayers sought by Arco Petrochemical against oil company Ajib. It's a matter bordering on the award of maintenance contracts for gas turbines in Ebocha in River State and Kwale in Delta State belonging to Ajib. 
Arco Petrochemical, which claims it won the bid, had sought relief of court to bar Ajip from awarding the contract to a non-Nigerian company, which they say is against Nigeria's Local Content Act. Justice Abdullahi Liman ruled that by virtue of Section 32 of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Act 2010, the plaintiff failed to prove that it is the only indigenous company that submitted its a bid for the contract. While counsels to both parties respond to the judgment. When you talk about the Nigerian Contact Development Act, it talks about protecting the rights of Nigerians to compete for the award of certain categories of contracts. And in this case, we're able to demonstrate to the court that all the companies that went through the bidding process were Nigerian companies, and they were so certified by the Nigerian Content Development Board to be Nigerian companies. So no Nigerian company, no single Nigerian company has exclusive right to be awarded any particular contract. You only have a right as a Nigerian to compete with fellow Nigerian companies to the exclusion of foreigners for certain categories of contract. This is the first time uh, a court is interpreting the provisions of uh, the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Development Act in a final judgment. And uh, being a test case, it's a test case, this is a test case brought by ACO. Being a test case where there are no uh, pronouncements by the superior courts, I mean the appellate courts, to guide the trial court, uh, there may uh, be a high possibility of error. And uh, it is apparent in the judgment, if you listen to it, that uh, we feel that uh, the judgment is uh, completely wrong. Well, hand washing with soap and clean water is one way to minimize cases of child mortality in Nigeria. Well, this is according to the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Water Resources, Mrs. Rabi Jimeta. Speaking at a forum in Abuja to commiserate Global Hand Washing Day, Mrs. Jimeta explains that the sustainable development goal on water and sanitation can only be achieved if Nigerians continue to maintain the habit of regular hand washing. In 2014, at the outbreak of the Ebola virus disease in Nigeria, there was an increase in the practice of hand washing and sanitization. No sooner had the disease disappeared, not very much attention has been paid to hand washing in the country. As Nigerians joined the world to mark the Global Day of Hand Washing, the Federal Ministry of Water Resources takes its campaign to schools around the country. The United Nations Children's Fund warns of the effect of lack of good sanitary habits such as hand washing. According to its chief, water, sanitation and hygiene, about 150 children die regularly in Nigeria due to unsanitary practices. In Nigeria, because of lack of proper sanitation, hygiene and proper hand washing practices, we lose about 150,000 lives every day. This is equivalent to losing about children, losing all the children in 10 classrooms on a daily basis. So that is a scale of the problem that we have currently. To eliminate this alarming statistics, the federal government on its path says it recognizes the importance of hand washing as part of daily practices for Nigerians. As such, plans have been put in place to sustain the advocacy so that the country can meet the sustainable development goal on child survival. The optimal benefit from the provision of water supply requires that it must be complemented with promotion of access to adequate sanitation and improved hygiene practices. It is in this light that the Ministry is collaborating with other stakeholders to develop a strategy and guidelines for implementing hygiene promotion in and through schools, in communities, marketplaces and health centers. Lending its voice, the Water Aid Organization says it will not take government alone to achieve the goal because unless Nigerians imbibe the habits of hand washing, the outbreak of some diseases will spread quickly in the country.
for hand washing to be effective, as we've heard already, it must be done at critical times. And we, we all know those critical times that we've been talking about after, before you eat, after you've gone to the toilet. But also, like we learned yesterday, and I've also been doing today, after you've been shaking a lot of hands. So, there are many critical times for us to wash our hands. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. It is hoped that the various enlightenment campaigns will pay off and prevent the spread of diseases in Nigeria. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, Nigerian Stock Exchange records huge investments from data technology in the last five years. But well, that's in business news. Let's join us together.